Welcome to the Audi Garage. In this episode of the B5 V8 project, I'm going to give you guys an update on how far along we are with the engine. So stick around. So I know it's been a while since I put out a video for this project, but I just want to let you guys know that since this is a personal project and uh, not something I have a lot of time for, that it, it does take a little bit longer than some of the other stuff I work on. But uh, I figured I'd give you a small update on where we are with the engine and just let you know we're getting really close to putting this in the car and we might be able to see it uh, in the next few weeks. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, if you're seeing this for the first time and for the people that already have subscribed and keep leaving me awesome comments, uh, you're in for a treat. We'll hopefully get this done soon. So to start, you can see most of the engine is together now. I've done the timing belt. Uh, thermostat, water pump, and tensioner. I didn't replace any of the rollers because I'm just trying to keep this on the uh, super budget side. So I found my first two surprises on the engine, which uh, was to be expected, I suppose, based on the quality of the work uh, around the harness and otherwise on the car. So when I went to put the cam lock bar on, uh, the camshafts don't line up, so the timing was off. It's probably off about a half a tooth. Uh, there's no issue with the cam chain tensioners. Uh, so what I'll need to do is get the get my different cam lock bar and pull off the pulleys, line up the cam marks uh, to make sure those are all correct, and then rotate the cam pulleys once I bolt it all back together. Uh, the second thing I found when I went to pull off the belt and double check uh, how our pulleys are, how the different pulleys are in the water pump and such like that to see what I could reuse. Um, Everything felt good, and then I went over to the tensioner roller and realized they completely forgot to put the washer to retain this pulley on the tensioner roller. So it obviously ran for a while and it worked, but that's uh, something you definitely want to make sure for. Make sure that's still on the engine when you put it. So on my spare engine that I have outside, it's actually this washer that sits behind that bolt and retains the pulley so you don't have uh, any issues. Uh, but now that I've checked out kind of the condition of everything, uh, we can go over the parts that I'm going to be replacing that I bought. So here's our basic uh, timing belt and water pump kit that I'm going to be doing. So obviously we're going to put a new belt in and a new hydraulic tensioner. Uh, that's pretty much your bare bones kit right there. Our pulleys look to be in good condition, not that they're super expensive other than that tensioner pulley which is um, a little bit of extra money. But this is all we're going to replace in terms of timing components and uh, just see how it runs. Uh, if it fails, it fails, but this is kind of a trial. Like I said, it's for our uh, own car uh, that we're kind of uh, experimenting with. Obviously, while we have the time belt off, we're gonna replace the thermostat uh, with a new one. We have the new O-ring seal in there as well. I accidentally ordered a second one because I didn't know if that came with it. And then we also have a new water pump and there's a gasket underneath there. see I powder coated the valve covers in a uh, bronze chrome. I also freshened up the timing covers uh, with some V-twin black I think it's called. We did the part source AutoZone special ceramic coating on the exhaust manifolds to make them look a little bit prettier. You can see we've got all new uh, copper crush wash or copper lock nuts. 
which is really nice. This is a replacement power steering pump because the one that originally came on this engine was completely seized. The plan was to utilize the B6S4 long tube headers, but realistically, I just want to get this thing running for now. And there would have been too much modification needed uh, with the car itself. Plus, I wanted to do something to fix this oil filter cooler alternator bracket contraption so that the oil filter that sits right here wouldn't be directly against the manifold. You can see I've put on my uh, SAI slash whatever combi valve block off plates that I make. So if anyone's interested in those plates, you can uh, message me directly. I don't think they're up on the web store, but I do have some in stock as of this video. One thing that was messed up on the original car that this was in, uh, they had used a stock 2.8 coolant bottle. So there was a whole bunch of janky fittings and hoses onto the coolant bottle. Whereas I picked up a proper A6 one and now I can route the lines directly to the bottle uh, as it came from factory. There's obviously still some hack job with the heater core lines here. So I'll probably eventually look for some replacements for those. I believe the stock A6 ones will fit. And then if you didn't catch it in the earlier clips, these coolant hoses are also still pretty rough, especially the lower one where we have the hose, we have a hard line with our coolant temp sensor, we have another connection here, another soft line, a connector, and then another soft line. So way too many points of uh, connection that could leak for my liking. So that'll eventually get fixed up. I did cut off the front snub mount bracket that doesn't attach to anything in the B5 just to give myself a little bit more room there. As you can see, the intake manifold's not on because I have had to actually rebuild this intake manifold out of two other ones that I had. Uh, none of the three in total manifolds ended up being completely good. So now, thankfully, I was able to get enough parts off the ones I had to have a fully functioning manifold with intake flaps. That one's kind of hard to do, so I'm just gonna leave that. So I have a fully functioning intake manifold with the uh, manifold flaps. I have the other uh, vacuum pod right there, just waiting for this, I was waiting for this gasket to, the gasket sealer to dry before I torque that down. This unfortunately is just spray painted for now. The uh, coating from the factory is some super hard enamel or something, so it wasn't as easy to strip and I just didn't want to waste any more time on it uh, for our personal car. It'll get swapped out probably with another cover from one of my other manifolds. I also have a trans spacer, so if some of you are smart, you'll know that I have that to run on the O1A trans because I do have an S4 clutch setup. You can also see I put some uh, red top or R8, whatever you want to call them, 2.0 coil packs on the engine to give it a little bit of a cleaner look instead of the bolt down ones. I'll go into detail about the uh, rad setup and the core support when I put it all back on the car, uh, but that's already ready to go from again the car that this was previously swapped in. So unfortunately that's a pretty short video, I just wanted to give you guys an update. So if you guys already haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and our website. You can search us under JAE Innovations and make sure to stay tuned because we'll have lots of exciting stuff coming up. So see you guys soon.